It's freaking cold. You got frostbite yet? In the frigid Canadian north, young pilots seeking adventure. That's why all those guys are up here. Battle the elements in World War II planes. Oh, On this episode, a rookie pilot is in over his head. A cracked exhaust threatens to ground the C-46 for good. You're Don't lie to me. And Joe lets loose. Get the out of here right now. Out of your hats, boy. The C 46 is an endangered species. In the whole world, there are only a dozen of these old warbirds still flying, and three of them are flown by Buffalo Airways, where C 46 co pilots are also becoming an endangered species. Who do you want to put on the 46 as a co-pilot? You need somebody now, so. Buffalo just landed a potentially big mining contract for the C-46, and they need to train a new co-pilot. And it's going to be 10 trips. OK, for when's sure. Andrew back? He's like 26 or something. 26, OK. But their top prospects are unavailable. Well, you need a co-pilot, and I'm leaving on, like, Friday. So. To Justin Simley, the company's chief pilot, there are no obvious candidates. So who are we going to put in there? We've got Larry or we've got Graham. Can we take Graham off the skid? No, we don't have a back. You're going to have to use then Larry. Then it's Larry. It has to be Larry. There That's go. all we got. we got to do a ride on him by Friday. Larry is Laurent Dussault from Montreal, barely 20 years old. Where are we going with this? <laughs> what? You know Nick? He's Buffalo's youngest rampy. But Larry sees his youth and youthful attitude as a plus. I'm young and willing. I want to touch everything. I want to be everywhere. I want to see everything. I'm really eager. I, I think that's what sets me apart. After 11 months at Buffalo, he'll be going straight from working the ramp to piloting the most difficult plane in the fleet. Larry, Larry's, even though he's a little bit of a douchebag, he still freaking works pretty hard. We just got to do it quick here. We'll do his ride Friday. Okay. Larry, how are you feeling? How am I feeling? Yeah. You good? Pretty good? Yeah. You know, you just got some pretty shit house luck. Did I? Yeah. For, from what? For, uh, we're checking you on the 46 this week. The 46, not the three. Are you serious? At first, I didn't understand what was happening. Is this a joke? Is this like some sort of like prank and the guys are just gonna laugh at, my, at me when I actually believe it? You're shitting me. No, that's true, man. On the 46? On the 46. Can I hug you? Yeah. <laughs> you worked hard, man. You just yeah! <laughs> Don't rub it in too much, those guys. What, what do I do now? What's that? What do I do Finish now? career. Oh, yeah, yeah, I guess. <laughs> Unbelievable. Biggest freaking tail dragger piston engine I've ever seen and I know of. It's still in operation. Bigger than a three, it's, it's an honor. It's, I don't know how to react them. Oh, I, I want to tell everybody. I don't know if I'm allowed to. I'm just, right now, I'm just enjoying it. <laughs> it's just awesome. Larry will face the biggest challenge of his life in a plane that's notoriously difficult to fly, even for experienced pilots. Across the tarmac, one of those experienced pilots, Gord Cooling, faces his own C-46 challenge. For nearly two years, he's been a captain on the smaller DC-3. But now, Buffalo is planning to make him a captain on the C-46. Devin will be checking everything I do. And then after that, um, I should be able to do a C-46 captain's ride. Gord has co-piloted this plane for years, but the 46 captain's seat is a big step. Even pilots like Devin Brooks, with thousands of hours on the plane, never truly conquer it. They're constantly telling you that you never get too comfortable with this airplane and that it can bite you in the ass. 
is it's a lot more hands-on it's a heavy airplane to fly and it really has you working all the time as they approach the airstrip in Norman Wells Gord gets ready for the hardest part of the flight the C-46 is made to land tail low. The best way to approach a runway in a 46 is with the tail low and nose high, letting the plane's wide body create drag, slowing it down. But if the nose is too high, Gord risks losing lift and the plane could suddenly drop, resulting in a rough landing. Find up on that line, buddy. I really had to, to work at it and I found myself a hive and I had to correct for that. more practice. Gord has to master his landings fast. He takes his captain's test the day after tomorrow. It's demanding airplane to fly. The next morning, Buffalo gets the C-46 ready for the new job, flying supplies to a mining camp near Yellowknife. Getting there requires setting down on a frozen lake with an ice landing strip. An ice strip is inherently dangerous because A, it is slippery, B, it's made from water, and uh, C, it's, it's very unpredictable. But I trust in the C-46. And Buffalo trusts Devin to get it there. They're in need of fuel and general goods, so we're doing a couple trips today, and uh, if we do well, it's most likely can turn into 20, 30 trips on the ice strip. Until now, the mining camp's been using much smaller planes. Devin wants to show the customer that the C-46 can handle four times the payload without needing to expand the ice strip. 150 foot wide, 3,800 feet. Uh, it's pretty good for the 46. Perfect airplane for the job. Right now, the contract is for just three short trips that the crew will finish today. But if Devin can prove to the client that the 46 is the best option, he can turn the job into a big, multi-week contract. We'll be in the air in 15, 20 minutes. You just try to show them how much we can actually bring in and save money for them. Devin and First Officer Ian Bottomley climbed a cruising altitude. The 46 is handling nicely, even carrying its maximum cargo load. Still beautiful the way she's loaded. Yep. Yep. But fully loaded and fueled, the 46 tips the scale at nearly 50,000 pounds. A lot of weight to slam down on a sheet of ice. First and foremost, the regular strip isn't going to sink if you go through it. If there's bad ice, you never know, we could uh, go through. With ice, you're always looking at pressure cracks, how thick it is, if it's been scraped up, so you can have ample braking. Ice reports from the lake look good, but there's only one real test. Back here, Better. Still stressful the first time, you know, you never know until you actually touch down. Devin Brooks and Ian Bottomley make their final approach to an 
ice landing strip on a northern lake. We'll take our time. Westbound 109, we're on your go to. There's more emphasis on your speed. Make sure you don't screw up anything. The mining camp here claims the ice is four feet thick, enough to support the C-46. But with ice, the only proof comes when the wheels touch down. is exactly what Devin was hoping for. Very nice strip. Yeah. Go, boys. As the crew unloads, the mining company is already impressed with just this one flight. The next load, we're gonna have 33 barrels. And they want to up the contract. A day's worth of work will now stretch on for at least two weeks. So it'll turn into almost 20 trips, so that's a nice little contract from 3 to 20. But three hours later, back on the ramp. What do you see, Dave? Easy oil leak, James. It's the mechanics find a serious problem with the plane. One that could cripple the C-46 before it can finish Buffalo's big new job. I found a crack in this exhaust here. Starting from about here and it goes all the way up and around. So once that piece off, then you got a flame shooting out this way and out back this way. Here. I believe it was Hemingway that said every thousand mile journey begins with a three hour delay. And the bells are now tolling for the C-46. Over the last few months, cracks and holes have eaten away at Buffalo's exhaust supply, forcing them to use their last spare piece. Exhaust heats up, cools down, heats up, cools down all the time, and it eventually starts cracking. And without solid exhaust, the planes can't fly. We are now officially pretty much out of C-46 exhaust. These World War II era parts haven't rolled off the assembly line for decades. The war effort made a lot of exhaust, but they didn't make enough for us. The parts are almost impossible to find. It just happens that C-46 exhaust is the new um, holy grail. So Buffalo Joe has called in a special consultant, Rob Harrison. Give me some pipes. I made a couple of calls today. He's made a couple. We've compared notes. We've we've gone through the list of all C-46s in the world. You have to uh, just follow all the leads you can get. Today, Joe's parts detective is chasing a new lead. Hopefully, hopefully we can get him to give us a contact of where they're at. I believe that there is some out there. We just haven't been able to put our hands on it yet. Buffalo Rob. Rob has spent days calling suppliers worldwide. Nothing until a tip about an aviation museum in California. Hey, I got your email. Yes. On the exhaust bags. Yes. And uh, I think I got the yes. I got one of my stock man comes in. We got locked up out in the trailer here. Okay. And, uh, Sometimes when they get an aircraft, they get also an inventory. And in our particular uh, case, we did find a museum with inventory of exhaust. All right. Excellent. Bye. You made my day. Thank you. you bet. All right, thank you. Bye. Heh. <laughs> he has it. Maybe. Joe from um, the CAF Southern California Wing has exhaust in Calmo Rio. He's his uh, his parts guy is going to go open up the shed and find out how much he has and the future of the C-46 rides on an unseen, forgotten stash of parts, 3,000 kilometers away. For now, with the last spare installed, the C-46 crew gets back to work. Oh, we're going on another flight.
Co-pilot Ian Bottomley is heading back to the ice strip with his new student in tow. Devin and Ian will be preparing Larry for his big co-pilot test, only three days away. It's about the steepest learning curve a pilot could imagine, especially one like Larry, who's only logged a couple of hundred training hours in a much smaller plane. Well, I've said it before and I'll say it again, 250 hours is quite low to be jumping into a right seat of a C-46. You haven't really flown full time in 11 months and they put you on the hardest aircraft they've got in this fleet. Pretty scary. And the C-46 is a much different beast from the tiny twin engines Larry flew back at flight school. One engine on the C-46 is the same weight as the plane he used to fly. So that's where he's at the disadvantage. Warning would have been nice, but on the other hand, when you've waited 11 months on the ramp, you don't ask twice, you don't tell him, well, can I get an extra week? No, you take the chance. Larry's rarely even sat in this cockpit. Now, he needs to watch everything and learn. Because tomorrow, he'll be flying in the co-pilot seat. A few hours later, as the day winds down at the hangar, Gord Cooling is ready for his own test. The C-46 has just came back. The plane is nice and warm, and it's a beautiful day. I'm going to do my uh, left seat's uh, captain's ride on the C-46. Gord gets the plane oiled up for his PPC, pilot proficiency check. The test that decides if he's ready to become the 46's captain. Right. <laughs> but there's a friendly face on the ramp to help calm his nerves. Gord's fiance Nadia is here to offer moral support. Hi. Wish you good luck on your flight. Thank you. You're gonna do great. Thanks. Love you. Love you too. Yeah. Have fun up there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so happy for him because, I mean, from the first day I met him, he wants to be captain of the C 46, and that's his ultimate goal at Buffalo Airways. And, I mean, to be so close to his goal, it's just, it's just amazing, you know? Justin will be the check pilot, observing the flight and deciding if Gord's ready. How long are you guys gonna be testing? Okay. See you in a bit. Yeah. Parking brakes. Is this? Thank your selector. Thank your selector is down. This is a huge step for him in his career, and it's been six years waiting, so that's pretty good. He's worked really hard to get here. With Captain AJ DeCoast in the right seat and Justin watching from behind, it's time for Gord to find out if years of hard work have paid off. There he goes. Exciting. In less than an hour, Gord will know if he's a C-46 captain, the newest and youngest in the world. In the evening air over Yellowknife, pilot Gord Cooling is in the middle of his check flight. The test that decides if he's ready to captain the C-46, Buffalo's most difficult plane to master. Chief pilot Justin Simley throws a few emergency scenarios at him. test is almost over. Buffalo 3, one tower, clear land, runway 33. All he has to do is nail the hardest part, the landing. Gord gets the nose high and the tail down. A smooth landing. Yeah, 
It's time for both Gord and his fan club to find out if he's made the grade. Hey. So how'd it go? Good. <laughs> I'm the C46 captain. Okay, well, they go to work or get fired. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty exciting. It's a very demanding airplane to fly, so it's a lot of fun, too, though. This has been five years in the making, eh? so I'm really proud of them. It's good. Congrats, Captain. Thanks, buddy. The next morning, Mikey McBride is hoping Buffalo has solved its exhaust crisis. The museum in California has sent all of its parts. The fate of the 46s could rest in this shipment. Hey, much work? Why? It's not that good? It's junk? It's junk? Yeah. Oh, f Most of the parts are riddled with holes, rust, and old repairs. I mean, it's not like we can just bolt them on the airplane rail. Oh, of course not. So, we have sink. Get them ready. Uh, how much? Uh, well, yeah, because you know, honestly, they sent them and said whatever you think they're worth. F all, eh? <laughs> I mean, really, they, that, that one piece is it's got to completely rebuilt. Mm -hmm. But director of maintenance Rod McBrien takes a closer look. Well, we can get Dean to replace these two couplings. And sees that there's more life left in these old pipes than at first glance. It doesn't look too bastardized. This is all the gum. I think so, right? I guess it looks like it's a good thick pipe. The final yes, verdict? This shipment is a long way from perfect, but these parts will buy them time. Better than having nothing? Well, of course, everything's better than nothing, but I guess if every couple of months someone sends us some exhaust, it'd be all right, eh? It sounds right on your spare. Yep. Over at Gord and Nadia's house, Gord's big week Hello? is getting even bigger. Yeah, just one second. Last year, Gord applied for a job at a northern oh. airline with a modern fleet of massive freighters and jetliners. I've been trying to get on with First Air for about eight months now and uh, had, had my resume in. I have lots of friends there. Uh, well, I'd, uh, I'd prefer to uh, work at a Yellowknife since, you know, I live here now and everything. After months of waiting, Gord had all but given up. But today, out of the blue, he's hearing back. Okay, thanks. Bye. Yeah, I got the job. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy for you. <laughs> his ultimate goal with Buffalo was to become a C-46 captain. Um, but the ultimate goal for him in his career was to become an airline pilot. It's a goal that runs in Gord's family. His father flew at a major airline for 35 years. Sometimes you can't help the timing, and I know that he would have loved flying um, the C-46 as well, um, but this opportunity came just so all of a sudden that he, he couldn't pass it up. The C-46 might be losing its newest captain, but out at the ice strip, the plane's work goes on. The crew is almost finished with the latest load which means the newest crew member is about to face his first big test. Larry flew here as an observer. He's flying home in the co-pilot seat. I must admit that the, the first few flights, when I didn't even had time to open the books and Devin set me on the right seat, I was a bit scared. What I was afraid is that Devin had really high expectations. Good windows, nine to go. Go moving. Nine to go, sure shot. Oh. Yours is shut, yeah, mine is shut, sorry. Taking off from a sheet of ice, surrounded by tall trees, Devin can't afford a mistake in his cockpit or a miscommunication with his co-pilot. We were on takeoff, and the responsibility of the captain is to look outside and call for the power settings, and the co-pilot sets the power setting right after the takeoff. Yeah, give me 50 inches, airborne 80. Power settings are measured in inches of manifold pressure, an indicator of how much power the engine is generating. Devin wants 50 inches of manifold pressure as they leave the ground, power that he'll need to clear the trees. Lock 
Larry sets the throttle to 50 inches, as requested. He's holding it there, but he doesn't set the friction knob to lock it in place. And as Larry tries to raise the landing gear... I just couldn't get it up, so I did release my hand from the throttles. And that's when the power setting rolled back, giving us less power than what we needed. The plane is barely clearing the treetops. I was making sure I was clearing the trees, and I felt it go. The throttle came back to minimum, so it's pretty much an engine failure. Devin takes over just in time. What are you doing? All right. I thought that he would have known to lock the throttles, but uh, no. Man, that's going to kill us. Okay. I'm trying not to hit the trees. Obviously, I got into a lot of trouble, I think, for a full 45 minutes of flight. This is what you're going to do. You're going to follow the throttles up. When I tap them, lock them. OK. And don't let go of the power. Absolutely. Oh, you're killing me. You're I got off. Devin yelling at me and uh, just basically telling me how, how dangerous this situation could have been. It's going to be a big learning curve, so just sit there and take it all in. That's for sure. You'll never do it again. You got yelled at a little bit about a few little things, but you know what? Tough shit. Larry might be learning from his mistakes, but with the check ride only two days away, he doesn't have time to make any more. At the Buffalo hangar, it's almost time for the daily DC-3 passenger flight to Hay River. Today's captain is Gord Cooling. Earlier this afternoon, he broke his big news. I uh, just told Joe that I quit and going to fly for first air. He got away. <laughs> Joe said that he didn't think it was a good move for me, but uh, it was my decision, and that's pretty much it. First there, eh? Right? Mm -hmm. oh, that's great. Congratulations, buddy. Thank you. Gord's co-workers are happy for him, really? and even management appears supportive. <laughs> yeah, so you're, you're off, you spread your wings, flying away. Yeah, learned everything I could from Buffalo, and now it's time to, time to move on. Six years, eh? Six years, yeah. I still remember the first day he showed up. <laughs> you know, it's a circle of life, and you know, just time. This time was Gord. But certifying a pilot as captain costs Buffalo thousands of dollars in fuel and man hours. Thousands of dollars that are now wasted. And as Gord heads to Hay River, Joe is beginning to fume. Yeah, we just need a PPC captain right on C forty six. He should have told us before the ride that he was leaving. Had he told me, look, don't give me an upgrade, I'm leaving, then I would have taken that that effort we gave and upgraded him onto a C-46 cap, and we would have gave that to one of the other fellas. So I'm a little disappointed that he didn't. I thought he had, you know, he had a bigger bag on him than that. You know, you can't pass up the opportunity when it comes to you. I think he'll get over it. The next day, Buffalo C-46 crew prepares for takeoff on the Norman Wells airstrip. They're finishing up today's food and mail run. And Norman Wells, uh, Buffalo 328, taxi 329. Now, Larry has one last chance to get some more experience. Ignition switches, control. With Gord leaving, it's even more urgent to license Larry as a new C-46 pilot. He takes his flight test tomorrow. As far as manifold pressure goes today, 50 inch should be good. Sir? Larry needs to prove he's learned from his last big mistake. This time, he'll keep the power locked. Buffalo 328, Roger. Have a good night. Devin wants to see how well Larry really knows his plane. He sets up a simulated malfunction. He pulls the fuse on the pizza heater. What's wrong with your airplane? Uh, I'm sorry? What's wrong with your airplane? What's wrong with your airplane? Oncoming air is channeled into the pitot tubes and provides the reading of the plane's airspeed. 
Pito heaters are essential to prevent ice buildup, which can restrict or block the airflow. That can lead to inaccurate readings in the cockpit. I wouldn't be able to tell you what's wrong with it. Well, you better. If we're in cloud right now, we're in a world of trouble. Maybe that's a little bit of a hint. Function's good. Or is it good? Your airspeed's at like 140 and dropping, Larry. My airspeed's at 140 and dropping? And he tells me, this is happening. I'm like, no, it's not. What are you talking about? And I thought it was true stuff that he was telling me, you know? 130. 2 heat was not working, but I didn't know that. <laughs> and if a pilot's airspeed is off... You just stalled this airplane from, from 9,500 feet straight down into the ground. It's not just flying a plane, Larry. You gotta know where this stuff is. I can understand that he feels like a, in a freaking kindergarten, and there's a 20-year-old guy that shows up right next to him, doesn't know anything about the aircraft. And I'm not a big teacher, that's why I get pissed off. I don't like doing it. Closing in on Yellowknife, Devin springs another surprise. Are you going to do this landing? There is. Larry's facing the biggest challenge in Buffalo's most challenging plane. They all take two flaps, please. They're not going slow enough yet. Have one. Yeah. Push that nose straight down. Push it down. They're really high. It's such a big aircraft, they might get to slam it to the ground and bounce a couple of times. Fly it down. Push it down. Push it. Level up, level up, level up, level up. That's the power. That's the power. I got it. It's a bouncy, brutally rookie landing. I felt like I was not very far. At least this time it's straight. You weren't straight. <laughs> We're even close, buddy. Right now, Larry's not even close to earning the captain's approval. Well, he was just high and fast, didn't start slowing down in time. He's letting the plane fly him right now, which is not good. C-46, you know, you, you got to stay ahead of the airplane and you got to fly it and don't let it fly you. I got I to gotta make up for it. I don't have a choice here. It's either you pass or you fail. Either you fly, either you go back to the ramp. You better learn fast. But his time for learning is almost up. Tomorrow, he flies his check ride. So, as the day dies down at the hangar, this is 14, 16, in the front tanks. Larry is just getting to work. Devin giving me a hard time really helped me uh, for the first week to understand how much uh, time and effort I had to put in this aircraft. Larry's taken Devin's lesson to heart. He needs to understand how the C-46 works, all of it. 244 Imperial gallons in the centers. Right now, he's trying to make sense of the 46's fuel system. So this year... This is only one part of five critical systems in an incredibly complicated 65-year-old machine. Now the engine-driven pump is supposed to maintain pressure between 17 and 19 PSI in the system. Finally, that night, I remember, it was 100% study and nothing else, because the next day was the actual checkout test. It's either pass or fail, so you better work as hard as you can. So, fuel system is pretty much done. Now we can go on through the oil system. It's going to be a long night. A DC-3 freighter rolls onto the Buffalo ramp, finishing a trip from Hay River. Recorded. 
Nice to see you. Amen. It's the end of a six-year run for Gord Cooling, the last time he will fly for Buffalo. Joe's probably already slightly agitated. After a delay on the Hay River ramp, he's fallen two hours behind. The truck was late and we had to get the packages off the plane into the van, so everyone loaded the plane really quickly. But not quickly enough for Joe. Hey, you want to stand around and get your picture taken, go home and do it. You got to get this freight moving, bang, bang, bang. And when Joe walks over, everyone kind of freezes because they don't know what to do next. They always want to do the right thing, and it looked like no one was doing anything, even though we got the plane unloaded in, like, record time. Hey, where you going with that? You can carry it. It's not that heavy. Throw my truck. With six years at Buffalo behind him, Gord's not going to miss the boss's blow-ups. Probably for one thing I do right, I've been yelled at for doing it. It's a little bit wrong, like five or six times. After today, Gord won't have to worry about Joe's temper ever again. But today isn't over yet. On the other side of the ramp, it's time for Larry Dassault's big chance to get his Buffalo flying career started. It's not easy to fly with Devin when you're a rookie. I think he's nervous. Captain Devin Brooks will be taking him out for his pilot proficiency check, his PPC. Yeah, we're doing his check out here, about 10 minutes. If Larry passes, he'll be greenlit to fly in the right seat of the C-46. If not, he goes back to the ramp. Devin's hoping that Larry's learned from his mistakes over the last four days. When shit hits the fan and you're under stress and something happens, you know, you just expect them to get the fundamentals down, get the emergencies down so he can do them as quick as he can without even thinking about them. But Larry's uneasy about flying with Devin. Because for the full week, Devin was screaming at me and being hard on me and everything. So at that point, I didn't know if Devin would just bring me down. Chief Pilot Justin Simley will ride along as the check pilot, making sure Larry meets every requirement. He wants to see Larry seize this chance, regardless of his age. I mean, if a guy wants something, it doesn't matter whether he's whether he's 20 or 30 or 40 or 50. I mean, if he wants to do it, you know, and he's given the opportunity, he'll do it. So, you know, we'll, we'll see it. <laughs> it's an opportunity of a lifetime, but if you screw it up, there ain't no second chance. After less than a week of prep, Larry has to prove himself to two of Buffalo's most experienced captains. On the most unforgiving plane in the fleet, and just maybe in the entire world. So yes, the, the odds were, I think, against me. When you skip steps, well, yes, most of the odds are gonna be against you. It's your responsibility to prove everybody that it was the right decision. Over in the hangar, goodbyes and paperwork are all that's left of Gord's last day. So that, was, that was your last trip? That was the last trip to Hay, yeah. Hay River in DC for your last time. But the good wishes are not unanimous. Joe still believes Gord took his captain's test knowing he was on the way out. But I wouldn't do that, and I know that its uh, training costs are very high, and uh, um, I don't know why he would have thought that I would do that. I know what day your application went It happened after. I know what day you did your ride. Well, I didn't know I was going to do an interview. $15,000 for you to piss my face. I hadn't heard one thing from First Air since I applied there. I had no idea they were interested in me. No, I didn't, wasn't trying to screw you. Well, I'm glad you're going, but I hate to see you waste my money on your way out the door. Sort of the unwritten rule in the industry is you don't take an upgrade if you know you're leaving. Why do you spend my money? I didn't have an interview then. I didn't know I got know, the job. Hey, you're bad enough. Don't f***ing lie to me anymore. I'm not. You're f***ing general in aviation for taking a PPC without following through on it because nobody likes that. Yeah, I could have used that money. I could have had Chris a PPC. I could have got Trevor a PPC. I could have got three or four guys a PPC. Yeah, well, you're missing four, yeah. Joe. No, I'm not. Nobody listens hey, to you anyways. Hey, listen. You roll your f***ing eyes at me once it's, more. It's uh, not the first time Joe screamed in my face and... Uh, Thank God it's the last. <laughs> Get the f out of here right now. Get the f out of here right now. Okay. 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 
You can take your f***ing attitude with you. Yeah, well, good. He shouldn't have did what he did. But he did what he did because he's young and inexperienced. And um, I put him in a position to do what he did. As Gord heads to the plane to grab his gear, he's still reeling. That is a nice guy. He's psychotic. That's history. It'll be faded out of my memory forever. I wish that my last memories of Buffalo and Joe as his employee would have been uh, shaking my hand and telling me good luck and thanks for all my hard work. That's all I really would have asked for. And um, it was quite the opposite. Larry Dassault's check ride on a Buffalo Airways C-46 is going well. Okay, clear down. Ready? I'm going to my head. But this flight is not over yet. When it is, Larry will either be Buffalo's newest co-pilot or its most heartbroken rampy. All that's left is the landing. And the question of how bumpy it's going to get. Buffalo 328 tower, wind 110 at 5, you're clear land runway 09. I did a couple of bounces, three or four actually, before I got the aircraft safely on the ground. It was far from perfect. Sorry. Don't need to say sorry to us, because you're going to be bouncing for the next year, I guarantee it. But the result of Larry's test is written all over his face. Good for you. It just did good. Better than I thought you would. Larry surprised me on his check ride. He's been studying. Yeah, it went pretty good. Good for him. Devin was really more of a, a co-worker, or really a friend in that cockpit. He really helped me, and it's probably because of him that I passed. Can't believe it. Yeah! He writes. Not only have I succeeded on my checkout, but I've succeeded on an aircraft that is <laughs> beyond any dream I had to fly. <laughs> I'm just so happy. It's incredible just to think that I get this opportunity. This is his break. He's 20 years old. He's, he's now a first officer in a C-46. And that's pretty cool. I would bet that he's the youngest first officer in a long time, at least since back to the war on one of those airplanes. My baby. My girl now! <laughs>